way of um, creating a kind of neon sign effect. And uh, it's very, very simple, actually. Um, you can use any kind of different shapes you want, or if you find a font that's applicable, you could probably use that. I'll, I'll just demonstrate it with a quick path here. And uh, I'll draw, using my tablet, some arbitrary shape. And it could be a single line here. What I'll do is first bring up the fill and stroke dialog. Um, I'll take the stroke. First thing I'll do is change the style so that it's got rounded corners and rounded ends. And then uh, change the thickness to something more suitable, say 7 pixels. Or in this case, we'll probably go bigger, 14, say. And that'll give us kind of our, our shape that we want. Like I said, it could be anything here. Once I have that selected, I'll pick a color that I'd like, say uh, red, bright red, and I'll duplicate. I'll make uh, two more copies of that. So I'll duplicate it with Control D twice, and I'll just drag off the different shapes. So there we have them there. Now what I'm going to do is keep one base shape in the middle. I'm going to create a blurred background shape with this one on top and a highlight shape with this one on the bottom. So let's tackle the highlight shape first. It's very simple. I'll take the shape, select it, go to the stroke style again, and I'll change the width to something like, say, 2, uh, maybe 4. Okay, and I will change that color to white. So you'll, you'll not see it here, but the, the object is still there. Uh, this shape I'll basically uh, leave it as is, but blur it to something reasonable. And you can play around with this uh, setting. And now it's kind of faint when you blur it the first time. So what I usually do is um, select it and just hit Control t to duplicate it. Um, that way it gets a little bit darker. Now all I do is make sure, selecting that, I send that to the back using Page Down. I select that white one and hit page up, make sure it's on top. I should select both of these and send them to the back. And I'll highlight them all, bring up the Align and Distribute dialog box, and align them. Pretty simple. Now, when I zoom in, you see it doesn't look that realistic. So what I do is select that highlight shape on top and if you're not sure whether that's the one, just select it again. Make sure there's a white color down here. I know it's selected. Now I'll just give it some blur as well. Probably one is enough. So you can still see the highlight here. Maybe we'll go one and a half. So you get kind of that neon tube shape. And that's really it. Um, it always tends to look better if there's a nice black background behind it. So I can draw a black rectangle, hit page down, make sure it's well behind. And there you have your neon shape right there. My machine is a little bit slow, as you can tell, but there it is. And you can create any kind of shapes you want. Uh, one thing I did in the, in the intro that you might not have caught is if you draw something with a path by hand, like I'm going to do here, and say it's a little bit jaggedy and you want to smooth it out, if you select it and hit Control L, Control L is a simplify command. You'll find it up here under path, simplify, Control L, and that tends to kind of round out jagged corners and, and uh, little uh, make things a little bit smoother. So that'll help out too if you're trying to create some neon letters uh, like I did in the intro. And that's basically it. It's pretty simple. Um, you can get some decent looking effects and you, like I say you can play around with the blur a lot more than I have here. I just wanted to demonstrate it quickly. Um, and you get a pretty decent neon effect. Okay, thanks for watching.